Now, there has been a lot of talk lately all over the place about the new NVIDIA RTX 50 series video cards. And there's no wonder. At first glance, these video cards look like they are the cat's meow. But are they? Or is it a bunch of smoke and mirrors, a bunch of fakeness because of the use of technologies like DLSS, multi-frame generation, and a lot of AI mixed into it? Well, let's find out. So this article is very interesting. It goes on and on, and there are some comments at the end, some good, some bad. A lot of people are pretty upset with NVIDIA in a way, and some of these results that have been published, and especially one game, Marvel Rivals, like for example, if you use that game and you, well, use multi-frame generation and some trickery, the results, well, are faster, using a 5070 over a 4090, but that's not raw performance. It's kind of like smoke and mirrors in a way, reaching results that, well, are not reflective of the raw performance of the video card. And this is what I like about this particular article. It kind of goes through the native non-DLS ray tracing performance between the 50 and 40 series. Now, I'm well aware that some of you out there might think that using technologies like DLSS and multi-frame generation and AI and all that kind of stuff is not faking it. But from my perspective, and I am old school, I've been producing videos for 24 years, I have over 4,200 videos on my channel, so I've been doing this for a while, I personally think it is faking it. So let me use Marvel Rivals as an example. That game has been heavily tweaked to use the technologies of the 50 series video cards, and therefore it will have better results than the 40 series video cards. It uses multi-frame generation, and for example, a plain Jane 5070 video card looks like it's faster than the 4090 because of this, you can get 240 frames per second using a 5070 video card as opposed to a 4090, which would only get 180. But this is not real raw native performance, is it? Now, I don't know about you, but I find when I use these technologies, which is really never, I might give it a try and see what it's like, for example. But every time I have done that, it results in an overall poor image, whether it's not sharp, a little bit blurry, or things just seem a little off. I can see use cases for this technology, like for example, on lower end video cards, it would be a godsend for people who really can't afford, like for example, a 4080 or a 4090, or maybe when these new cards come out, a 5080 or a 5090. While they're not as expensive as I expected, still, they are expensive. A 5080 will be $1,000. That is the MSRP. God knows what it actually will be. But $1,000 for that video card US, that's around $2,000 Canadian. $2,000 for the 5090, which is around $4,000 Canadian, if you can believe it. And I'm sure in some countries it'll be even more expensive than that. But yeah, a lower end video card, I can see these technologies really, really coming in handy. But if you're like me and you have a little bit better quality video card, you probably don't use these technologies. But I would be interested to hear from you on this. So let's go back into this article and actually find out how much faster the native non-DLS ray tracing performance actually is. So this is native ray tracing performance without DLSS. The RTX 5090 is 30% faster than the RTX 4090. The 5080 is 15% faster than the 4080. And the 5070 Ti, or Ti, as well as the plain Jane 5070, is 20% faster than the 4070 Ti and the 4070. So if you own a 40 series video card, would this give you enough of an incentive to run out and buy a 50 series video card? 
probably not. So let me use an example. Let's say you're getting 100 frames per second in a game with your 4090, and you pick up for $2,000 US a 5090, and now you're getting 130 frames per second. Is that worth it to you? Well, maybe it is, but for me, it would not be. And if you look at the native ray tracing performance without DLS for a 5080 versus a 4080, it's even less, 15%. So you'd go from 100 frames per second to 115 frames per second. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that you should not go out and purchase an NVIDIA RTX 50 series video card, even if you have a 40 series video card. That's going to be completely up to you. However, may I suggest that you give it a while after the reviews come out. Hit a few reputable review sites, see what the results are, and from there you can really make an informed purchase decision. There's going to be, of course, a lot more coverage on this, especially once reviewers do get a hold of these video cards, and it's going to be extremely interesting to see the native true performance comparing the 50 series to the 40 series. Now, if you have an RTX 30 series, then you're going to get some substantial jumps in performance. So that would make a lot more sense, in my opinion, going from a 30 to a 50 than going from a 40 to a 50. But we're going to have to wait and see what the true results are. It's all interesting, though. I love video cards. As a matter of fact, it's probably one of my favorite computer products. It's something that I've enjoyed reviewing myself over the years. I'm not doing reviews anymore. I gave it up a while back. I mean, I did them from the year 2000 to 2016, so 16 years of doing that. I kind of just stepped away from it because I got sick of doing it. The whole industry now is just flooded with reviews and reviewers and all the rest of it. And to be honest, you need a lot of time and devotion. I know I did it for such a long time to pump out really good content, content that is interesting and accurate. It takes a lot of time and effort. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. But as always, please remember if you enjoy my content and I'm trying to put out a video every single day and keep that up to just keep myself up to date, to be honest with technology, but also let you guys know what is actually going on. If you enjoy all this stuff, remember to comment, like, share, and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.